We're heading back to Scandinavia for this one, and we're hitting up the unreal canaled city of Stockholm, Sweden. Stockholm is such a unique city with having so many waterways all sneaking throughout its core. Maybe not as romantic as Venice, but the city encompasses 14 different islands all connected by more than 50 bridges. I mean, it goes without saying that a boat is most definitely a need and not just a want if you're living here. Or at least you'd have to make use of the many ferries that shuttle passengers between the islands. Located on the Baltic Sea and easily the largest city in the country, Stockholm claims the title of Sweden's capital while also being the cultural, media, political, and economic center as well. A lot of people don't know this, but Stockholm also plays host to the annual Nobel Prize ceremonies, which awards the recipients with world-renowned fame and recognition. The ceremonies happen at none other than the City Hall. Towering over the water's edge, constructed with a whopping 8 million bricks and topped with a 106 meter tall tower, Stockholm City Hall provides amazing views of the boats below. The building was inaugurated in 1923 and has been used for the Nobel Prize banquet within its Blue Hall every December, with a dance to follow in the Gold Hall, which fittingly is adorned with 18 million gold mosaic tiles. Fair to say this building has seen its fair share of geniuses. Okay, fair warning from here on out. My pronunciation of a few of these next places is going to be, let's say, subpar at best. I just want to be honest with you so you can set your expectations accordingly. I suppose with Stockholm having so much water, you would think they'd have a great waterfront to take advantage of, right? Well, they do with Muntiliusvägen and Strandvägen. Muntiliusvägen is a great little neighborhood with a wooden and cobblestone path stretching over 500 meters with the finest views of City Hall, Old Town, and the cruise ships calling to port. While Strandvägen is one of the most exclusive boulevards in the city, with views of Old Town from the other side of the water, and also boasts some awesome cafes and bars to take advantage of on those warm sunny days. Looks like this is where you'll find me with a nice cold beer. I mean, only one though. At least until I have a little fun like doing some shopping, visiting the ABBA museum, or hitting up Sweden's oldest amusement park across the water at Gronolund. Certainly, I want to save the drinking until after a few rides here. It's hard to explain where things are here because everything is just across the water, but it kind of really is. Just look at the Google Maps for Stockholm and you'll see why. So before you head to my favorite island, make sure to stop off at Kungstrad Garden to enjoy an afternoon. And if you plan it right, you can experience the Cherry Blossom Day in April when the trees are in full bloom. Or try ice skating in the winter. Or challenge yourself to a game of chess on the streets with the locals. Either way, such a cool spot. Okay, on to the coolest spot in my opinion, Stockholm's Old Town, which is conveniently located on its own little island smack dab in the middle of the city. Named Gamla Stan, its cobblestone streets and ochre-colored buildings technically spread over three islands and include plenty of museums, internationally renowned restaurants, cafes, and bars that will keep anyone busy for however long you want. Not to mention the Royal Palace that's also here with over 600 rooms, five museums, and is the current residence of the King of Sweden to this day. Oh, and if you're looking for that famous square that every old town has, don't worry, there's one of those too. Storiget isn't huge, but it's totally cool. The oldest square in the city, complete with a cannonball stuck in the wall of one of the many gabled houses from the 16 and 1700s, the Nobel Prize Museum, and a lovely Christmas market in December, you'll have to mark this one down as an absolute must. Okay, Stockholm is as confusing as it gets, but it's to be expected with so many islands, bridges, and super hard names to pronounce. Either way, I hope I did it at least a little bit of justice and that you enjoyed it enough to consider subscribing to my channel. Trust me, we're slowly growing and I enjoy learning about each place more and more, so I'm not stopping anytime soon. 
So thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing.